Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Liz Johannesson. I'm head of webinars here at Cytobank, and I just wanted to introduce today's webinar, which is Getting Started with SiteSeq Analysis in Cytobank. Joining us today will be Cytobank's president and CEO, David Crawford, our director of informatics, Chi Hao Chi, and special guest, Miguel Tam from BioLegend. Up first is our CEO, Dave. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Liz, and welcome everyone to our webinar. Very pleased to join you this morning. Um, wanted to let you know, as you may have seen yesterday, there was a press release, and we announced to all of our users that we were acquired by Beckman Coulter Life Sciences. Um, I'm Hopeful many of you or most of you are aware of Beckman, one of the leaders in uh, cytometry, um, automation, um, and they've also been investing in other uh, life science products. And they are part of the Danaher family, which has numerous businesses that provides high quality life science products. Um, Cytobank's been in business for over 11 years, and we felt it was time to partner with a larger organizations so that we could scale and bring our platform and services to more people around the world and frankly, um, scale with more single cell data and more scientists. So um, Beckman certainly provides that opportunity and infrastructure and really, we really look forward to working with them. Um, wanted to be really super clear that we will continue to support data from all flow and mass cytometry instruments. We have uh, customers that use almost every instrument out there, and we will continue to support data from all of those instruments. And obviously, we're also going to expand in terms of the number of single cell data types that we're able to um, analyze and help you manage. Um, at this time, uh, please uh, use the same Cytobank support and sales contacts. I imagine there may be some changes over time, but we'll let you know when those occur. Um, from, a, from a Beckman perspective, I think what we bring to the to the family is the ability for Beckman to offer a much more complete solution for data analysis and cloud-based uh, data storage and sharing. Um, specifically, we will complement the Calusa analysis software that is a couple different versions of desktop software, a research and an IVD based uh, software uh, will help uh, with higher parameter data analysis and cloud-based storage and management. And then um, the Cytoflex uh, instrumentation as well as Navios, but we think that initially the Cytoflex 21 color flow cytometer will be a great complement uh, to the Cytobank capabilities. So wanted to spend a few minutes just overviewing the Cytobank platform. Um, as many of you are aware, we are a cloud-based uh, platform for high dimensional data analysis, sharing and storage. Um, we are well known for our machine learning based algorithms, our structured content management, and we also have uh, informatics consulting services. The platform and the services allow you to effectively um, manage and hopefully extract the most amount of value from your high parameter single cell data. Um, and we think that because we're cloud based, it's much easier to share and store those data than many desktop platforms. What we're very well known for is a portfolio of machine learning algorithms. We have three unsupervised and one supervised algorithm on the platform. Um, the first algorithm we launched was Spade, which is a clustering algorithm back in 2012. Um, then we launched Disney in 2014, which is an implementation of TSNI for um, dimensionality reduction. Uh, Visney is probably our most widely used algorithm, and many of you have probably seen TSNI for both RNA-seq data and cytometry data. In 2016, we launched Citrus, which is a supervised, in effect, a pipeline that helps you compare statistically, look for statistically significant differences between groups of samples. Um, many of our users are using this with both lower and higher parameter data. Um, as they work on um, developing hypotheses for biomarkers and clinical trials. Um, we also um, launched uh, FlowSOM in 2018, which is a clustering algorithm that's uh, faster and more scalable than SPADE, and we've seen a lot of our usage from SPADE switch over to FlowSOM, but they are complementary. 
Um, in addition to the machine learning algorithms that we provide, we also provide a broad suite of analysis tools for single cell data. We have a number of tools for the data pre-processing steps, including basic gating functionality, histograms, contour plots, um, different types of annotation available for plate work and auto compensation. On the data analysis side, I detailed many of the algorithms that we have from a machine learning perspective. We also have the sunburst display, which is a very popular way to look at relationships between different samples. Um, on the customization side, um, we'll talk a little bit about DROP, and it's one of the key features that's used for um, importing RNA-seq data. Um, we also have the API that we'll talk about that talks that allows you to scale and programmatically access the platform. Um, and we have other visualizations such as heat maps. One thing we're super excited to announce, and we haven't had a webinar on this, and it's not clear that we will, is um, new experiment manager. So a big focus of Cytobank and many of our users um, value the platform for its data storage and management capabilities. We recently renamed the inbox to um, Experiment Manager, and we put in new functionality that makes it easier to use and more customizable. Um, one of the big features of the new Experiment Manager is that related experiments are grouped together into a family tree. Um, you can also share and rename experiments directly from the um, experiment manager and customize columns to display, hide, or filter from the experiment manager. Um, additionally, you can see what other collaborators are, are doing from the experiment manager. So it really um, makes it easier for you to manage the uh, complex uh, relationships between different experiments that you will be working with. As many of you are aware, we have the capability in Cytobank to customize the level of access you provide to your experiments. Um, the basic level is everything is private to you, but as you choose to work with collaborators, reviewers, or even share experiments publicly, that is possible um, within the Cytobank platform. Um, data are typically aggregated by study via projects with the appropriate commit permissions. Um, all changes made to an experiment are saved instantaneously, um, so you don't have to worry about saving it or losing data. And collaborators can work in real time on the same data sets, either via the graphical user interface or with the API. So <clears throat> as we move more and more towards clinical work and clinical research work, really saving the experiments and how you got to those final results will be more and more important, and we like to enable that. The application programming interface is um, a, a very uh, supported feature by Cytobank and it allows a number of different ways to interface with the platform. We have power users that use the API to send batched instructions, um, typically from our based workflows, but from other types of workflows as well. We have people that are integrating Cytobank with their um, back-end data architecture for their electronic lab notebooks or LIMS where we push data into their uh, different back-end um, storage mechanisms. And then we also have people that um, leverage Cytobank for certain components of the workflow, but maybe there's an algorithm or normalization method that you wish to use that's not within Cytobank and you can create your own pipeline and still store that data within Cytobank utilizing the API. So DROP is a functionality that Chi Hao will touch upon um, in his portion of the webinar. Um, what it enables you to do is uh, really load um, any type of numerical tabular data into Cytobank by converting it into the FCS format. Um, the data on this slide were provided by Dr. Adib Rahman, who did a webinar on SiteSeq um, that's available over YouTube a couple months ago. Um, and we see people importing all kinds of um, protein data, uh, RNA-seq, mass spec, um, and other type of data into our platform with DROP. Um, based on the work that people are doing with DROP, we are um, slowly building out different workflows for the additional data types that uh, people are working with on the Cytobank platform. All right, at this stage, 
I'm going to pass it over to Chi Hao to take the next phase of the webinar. Thank you, Dave. And thanks so much for the great introduction and sharing the very exciting news with us. And next, I will talk about the SciC workflow. As some of you, you might know, SciC is an emerging technology for study RMAC expression and surface protein expression at the single cell level. To address the increasing need of analyzing SciC data, we create this SciC workflow in Cytoband. Starting from the raw sequencing phase, uh, you will go through three steps to pre-process and analyzing your data. The first step is to map sequencing rates and generating raw expression counts. And then the second step, you will pre-processing the raw expression counts with your Cytoband R script. And then at the end, you can upload the pre-processed data into Cytoband and use all the existing Cytoband machine learning tools to analyzing your SciC data. So let me provide more details for all these three steps. In step one, um, the purpose of this step is to map the raw sequencing rates and align those rates to a reference genome and then based on the location of the rays uh, to generating a raw expression count matrix for both RMA and surface protein expression. So for RMA-C expression data, um, the raw signal are saved in uh, .fastq files. We recommend you using Cell Ranger pipeline tools or star aligners to process the RMAC FASTQ files. And just uh, some few notes for you. Um, if you are interested in running the alignment by yourself, and you will need to have at least 30 gigabytes of memories on your local computer in order to analyze human single cell RMAC data. And then we also recommend you to obtain pre-built genome reference from either 10x website or from the Illumina iGenome project website. And if you somehow miss up your genome build and the AM result could be very bad because there are not software can help you detect that kind of mistake and you will get in misleading results at the end. And for the Potting expression uh, data, we suggest you to use the SciC count Python program to process the protein FASTQ file. And here, if you have the cell hashing antibody expression data in your experiment, you also need to use the SciC count tools to analyzing and pre processing the cell hashing antibody expression. After you finish the alignment, and you will get some expression count matrix. And at this step, you can run a Cytoband R script to pre-processing those expression count matrix. And the, pur the purpose of this pre-processing step is to help you to remove noise from the data and also uh, apply normalizations appropriately on normalizations to the data so that you are comfortable to compare your samples or compare one gene with the other genes. So um, I outlined the five major steps um, in um, here. And the first one is to filter data using expression data of the cell hashing antibody expression matrix. And if your experiment do not, does not have this cell hashing antibody expression information, you do not need to do this. But if you do, uh, the script will normalize the data to remove library size bias, and then use the normalize the data to identify and remove doublets. Next, uh, the script will filter data using the RMAC expression information. And here we will remove low expression genes. And we also will remove cells that has high mitochondrial gene expression. After finish the two filtering steps, um, the script will go ahead 
to normalize the data. And here we will remove library size bias for the RMA6 version data. And we will also standardize the, both the RMA C and the protein expression data so that you can easily compare uh, like surface protein marker expression with uh, corresponding protein coding gene expressions later in cytoband. And then again, if you um, using cell hashing antibodies in your experiment, the script will demultiplex the data. And with the demultiplex the data, the script will combine the RMAC and surface protein expression at the end to output the normalized data as in, into a .csv file, and you can use the CSV file to import your data into Cytoband. So in step three, after you finished alignment and pre-processing, you will import the process the data using drop and into Cytoband. And then you can explore underlying data pattern using Visni tools, or maybe correlate surface protein marker expression with corresponding protein coding gene expression using histogram and dot plots in, in Cytoband. And we also have flow sum and you can use it to identify cell clusters, either with gene expression matrix or the surface protein marker expression matrix. If you have a lot of samples in your experiment, and you definitely want to try the Citrus. Citrus is uh, advanced statistical analysis tools that can help you to automatically discover uh, statistical significant biomarkers from your data. Next, I will walk you through the SciC data analysis workflow using a bioledging human PBNC module short dataset. So here are some backgrounds about this dataset. And this data has four samples, and sample number one, HTO1, and number two, number three, and four. And sample number one is a control sample. It is a healthy PBMC sample. In sample number two, we, we use the bioallergic module short reagent to remove all the CD4 positive uh, cells. And then in sample three, we remove uh, all the CD14 positive cells. And we do the same thing. Uh, we, in sample number four, we remove the CD19 uh, positive cells. In this data set, there are 10 surface protein markers, and they are like CD3, CD4, CD8, CD45, and the rest of them I listed here. So because this is a size C data set, so after you um, finish mapping alignment, and you will have three gene expression matrix, uh, you will have one RMAC gene expression matrix, one surface protein expression matrix, and one cell hashing antibody expression matrix. And for the size of the RMAC gene expression matrix is a uh, 33 by 70,000 uh, matrix. Basically, we have about 33,000 genes and 70,000 cells. And then we have 10 antibodies in the surface protein expression matrix with uh, 70,000 cells. So if you look at the two uh, screenshot in these slides, um, the screenshot on the right is a screenshot for the cell hashing antibody expression matrix. And as you can see, columns are the cells and rows are the for hashing uh, tags. So for each cells, you can see the unique cell barcodes in this expression matrix. And then the screenshot at the bottom is the surface protein marker expression matrix. Again, columns are the cells and rows are the 10 surface antibodies. After you get these three row expression matrix and 
you can run the R script to apply filters uh, with those raw expression matrix. And here I will highlight two uh, filtering steps. And the first one is to filter out low expression genes. And in this particular data set, we have about 50% of the, uh, of the 33,000 genes pass the low expression filter. So if you look at the histogram on the right, and this is a histogram of raw gene expression counts per gene across all the cells and samples. And uh, basically the S assay tell you the number of raw gene expression counts per gene. And, and the Y assay just the number of genes um, are including the in a particular bar. So if you look at the first bar in uh, the left bar in the histogram, you will see this is the biggest bar in this histogram. And actually all the genes in this bar uh, do not have any expression values in this RMAC expression data sets. And then for the, sec for the second filter, we will filter out cells that are doublets or cells with high mitochondrial gene expressions. And after this filter, we will get about 9,000 cells. And here I have a density plot, which is showing on the left to help you understand how we use the cell hashing antibody expression matrix to identify doublets. Basically, we calculate the difference between the highest the two cell hashing antibody expression values. And then use the difference, the difference of those values to make this density plot. And as you can, and again, and this, uh, the cell hashing antibody expression matrix is a normalized uh, expression matrix. So you can see on the X axis, the, the range of the value is between zero and one. And then you can see we have a red line here which represent the value of which we apply the cutoff at point A. So all the cells whose uh, value is higher than point A are considered as, uh, will be considered as singlets. And all the cells who has a value less than point A and will be considered as doublets. Okay, so after finish the alignment and pre-processing pre and filtering, and finally you can upload this normalized, uh, well cleaned the data into Cytoban and do some fun analysis. So let's begin with some simple analysis. The first thing, uh, first example I show is to use a uh, histogram in Cytoban to visualizing surface protein expression. As I explained earlier, in this data set, we have four different samples, and we have one control and three uh, samples which do not have uh, a certain number of uh, targeted cell populations. And we want to validate this um, in, by using this histogram. So let's look at the histogram. And in this histogram, rows are the false, uh, are the samples and columns are the CD marker expressions. If you look at the second row and in the column one, you can see for sample number two, we do not see, we cannot find a CD4 positive populations um, in the data. And we treat, and like this finding basically agree with what uh, the experiment said how we know that we should not see any like um, CD4 positive cells in the sample number two because we use the bioallergen module shock reagent to remove those CD4 positive cells. And then if we look at uh, row three, and this is the histogram for sample number three, again, and um, as you can see, we cannot find any CD14 positive cells in these samples. But we do see the CD14 positive cells in the control sample, and also in the sample two and sample four. 
So, so bioallergen module short reagent can effectively remove targeted cells. Um, and this is what we observe from this analysis. And after we finish this very simple histogram analysis, we can do some advanced analysis in cytoban. And one thing um, I would like to do is to using the Wisney uh, to run a dimension reduction um, process with the RMAC expression matrix. And the idea here is that we want to use the size C RMAC expression to identify cell populations. And here we have these uh, matrix of Wisney maps. And the rows, again, are, C, uh, are CD marker expressions. And the columns are four different samples. And if you look at column number two and row one, and basically we cannot see any CD4 positive cells in this uh, Wisney plot but we do see a lot of CD4 positive cells in the control samples, also in sample number three and number four. And if we look at the other marker, and let's look at uh, CD19, and the expression level of CD19, which are showing at the, la uh, the row three, as you can see, we can find a CD19 positive cell populations in the first, in the control samples. And then we can see the same, uh, we also can find another uh, same group of uh, CD19 positive cells in sample number two and number three, but we cannot see any CD19 positive cell populations in sample number four, uh, which is the sample that we use the biology module short reagent to remove all the CD19 positive cells. And the other takeaway from this analysis is that uh, the RMAC expression um, data provide enough information to help you to identify cell populations. And because the size data has both the gene expression and protein expression data, so very often people will ask uh, how well does gene expression and cor correspond uh, correlated with the protein expression. And to answer the question, um, I did a comparison. I compare CD14 antibody expression with CD14 gene expressions in a control and a CD14 duplicated samples. So we have, again, we use the Wisney map um, that we had in the previous slides and then we overlay the CD14 antibody expression and the CD14 gene expressions on this reason map. So if you look at the control samples, uh, the first columns in this matrix, as you can see, uh, we can use CD14 antibody expression to identify a group of CD14 positive cells. And actually we can use the same uh, we, can, we also can use the CD14 gene expression um, information to identify the same group of cells in this Wisney map. That means um, the CD14 antibody expression um, is well correlated with the CD14 gene expressions. And we not only observe this in the control samples, we also can observe this in the Sample number three, which we remove um, CD14 positive cells from the experiment. Again, we only see a few CD14 positive cells um, if we use the antibody expression to identify uh, that CD40 positive cells in this uh, in the upper right Wisney plots. And we can make the same conclusion by using the CD14 genes. Um, with the Wisney map on the up, uh, bottom right. So um, you might see, okay, uh, we only exam one uh, CD markers. How about the other CD markers in the data? So let's look at another example. And uh, here we compare CD19 antibody expression with the CD19 gene expression. And again, 
in both in the control samples and in a, in a sample which do not have any CD19 positive cells. And again, and you can either use antibody expression or gene expression to identify the same group of CD19 positive cells, or you also can safely using the CD19 antibody expression and gene expression and to identify, try to identify CD19 positive cells in those uh, CD19 duplicated samples. So um, in Cytoban, we also have a, 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 a cell clustering tools, which is FlowSum. And usually people use FlowSum to identify cell clusters. Uh, but if you only have um, like smaller number of samples in your experiment, you also can use FlowSum to identify uh, populations whose abundance are different between samples. It's kind of an alternative approach to citrus if you do not have enough number of samples to run citrus. And here I provide an example to show you how can you do that kind of analysis uh, with this uh, size C data. And we have two minimum spanning tree created uh, from the, the flow sum uh, runs. And then the, uh, the minimum spanning tree on the left is generating with the control samples and the minimum spanning tree on the right is generating with the uh, CD4 deprecated samples. Again, and these trees has many nodes and branches and then we overlay the CD4 expression over this minimum spanning tree and use that information, we can identify one branches of cells which are very likely to be CD4 positive uh, cells. And if we do the same thing for the uh, deprecated samples, and we can see um, the size of the nodes in the branch is small, much small compared to the control samples. And basically, um, this is very easy way for you visually to see the difference. And um, because we know that in this uh, CD4 deprecated samples, we should not see any uh, CD4 positive populations, but we should see a lot of uh, CD4 positive cells in the control samples. And also I apply the same analysis method to look at the CD4 team uh, markers and also the, the sample number two, which we do not have any CD14 positive cells in that sample. Again, we compare the control with the CD14 positive deprecated samples. It's very clearly that we, we only have, we have much uh, fewer cells in the, in the uh, CD14 positive deprecated samples comparing to the control samples. And this size C data has, um, is so unique because it has both RMAC expression and also the antibody expression uh, data. And we want to do some integrated analysis using both the RMAC and protein expression. Here I propose a way to do an integrated analysis in Cytoband. And I assume uh, we are interested in looking for different expressed genes of B cells across different samples in this data set. And then uh, in order, and there are two steps in this workflow. In step one, you will need to run FlowSum to identify B cell clusters using the size C protein expression data. And then in step two, you can looking for differential expression genes based on full change values compute with the RMAC expression matrix in the size D data. So this is the result for the, of the step one. And here, after we run flow sound, we can create heat maps in Cytoband. Uh, we have two heat maps in this slice. The heat map on the left is the heat map generating with control samples. And the heat map on the right is a heat map generated with the 
sample number four. And then if we look at the control sample first, and, and let's look at the meta cluster nine. And as you can see, this meta cluster nine has very high CD19 expressions and, and also have a very low CD3 uh, expressions. And based on biology knowledge, we know that this meta cluster uh, could be a B cell cluster. But, but in this experiment, remember we have um, sample number four, which we remove all the CD19 positive cells in the, in the data, in the sample. And so let's look at the heat map of the sample number four. And here actually Flo some did a great job and Flo some basically reports that uh, tell us that they are not, uh, it cannot find um, like all, all the like B cells in these, uh, these samples because that's the reason why we have these like empty black cells in this heat map. And after we identify this, uh, the B cell clusters using the flow sum results, and we can go ahead to identify differentially expression genes based on log flow change. Again, in Saddleband, you can use um, create a heat map and then let Saddleband compute the flow change values for you. And, and what you will get is a long heat map. And um, I took a screenshot here and which is the heat map showing on the right and you will get a very long heat map because in this uh, size data we have about 700 genes in the data and then we just using all the all those 700 genes to create this heat map and most of the genes do not have any um, like a very interesting signals but we do see some genes, they are differentially expressed between samples. And if we look at the heat map in the middle, again, the columns are the samples and the rows are the genes. And as you can see, we can see gene GPX4 um, has, uh, has a higher expression in sample number two and number three uh, comparing to the control sample. And then we also can see we have gene TCL1A, um, which um, has a low expression in sample number three and number two comparing to sample number one. And we also see some other differential, a kind of a differentially expressed gene such as COTL1, TX, and IP. And this is just a very simple example to demonstrate how can you do an integrated analysis Basically, you combine the power of RMAC expression and antibody expression to do analysis in Cytoban. And I hope I, I, I proved that you can um, easily analyzing the size C data in Cytoban. And then for the next step, if you are interested in trying this size C workflow, uh, you should start to generating the protein data with the bioallergenic total C antibodies. And you can set up a free 30 day trial on premium to experience the cytoband side C workflow. We also have the data analysis consulting service at Cytoband, and we can help you to map your raw uh, side C sequence and find, and also help you to pre-process in a file if you don't want to, or you do not have, you don't know how to program it. So, and this is the end of my presentation and thanks everyone. I would like to invite our CEO, Dave, and our business partner, Miguel from Biolegend to join me for Q and A. And um, please feel free to submit your question right now and we will try our best to answer as many questions as we can. So the first question is, flow sum complications is to define the number of meta cluster and, cl uh, and clusters. How could we approximately calculate these numbers? And, let uh, let me take this 
uh, questions. And basically, FlowSum is a cell clustering uh, unsupervised algorithm to help you to uh, unsupervisedly identify cell cl uh, cluster cells using the bar uh, the marker expressions, and then and the algorithm will calculate Euclidean distance in most of the cases to evaluate the relationship between all the points in the data set, and then after you after algorithm calculate this B, uh, distance matrix, you will go ahead and, and apply a clustering algorithm to identify uh, meta clusters and clusters. And one way you can approximate those parameters is you can leverage existing biology knowledges to figure out what would be the best uh, uh, ideal value for those parameters. And the other thing you can do is like you can run a reasoning. Reasoning is super flexible and it's very powerful. You can estimate the upper bound, uh, like the highest uh, 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 possible values for number of uh, meta cluster you can get from this experiment and then use that to guide your uh, flow sound analysis. And the second question is, Actually, uh, what kind of a data will you get after the R script of one or two CVS file? And thanks for the question. And let me clarify this. After the R script, you will get in, uh, one CS file per sample. So in our example data set, we have, uh, we, has, uh, we have four samples. So that we will have four .csv file. And then for each CS file, you will have both the RMAC expression information and the self-supporting uh, information. So the next question um, is for Miguel. And I noticed uh, BioLegend has several contagions for size C. And can you explain the difference? Um, BioLegend has um, a number of conjugates and we call them the we right now we have three different type of conjugates and we call them total sick a b and c and the total sick a conjugate was the first one we released more than a year ago and the peculiarity of that conjugate is that it contains a poly um, a poly a tail on the oligonucleotide which mimics a messenger rna that can be found in the cell so what that means is that that antibody can be captured by any system that employs a poly DT oligo for capturing the messenger RNA in a cell. So that conjugate total seq A is compatible with a number of uh, platforms that are out there. Obviously the Tenex Genomics, the Chromium platform uh, is compatible with that one, uh, but it's also compatible with other instruments that are employ that poly DT as a capture sequence. Uh, for example, the C1 instrument from Fluidime and Dropsic, for example, which is not commercially available, but some people may use it. So that's the peculiarity of that particular conjugate or format that we call it as well. Uh, we also have two other formats, Total Seek B and Total Seek C. These two formats were developed in collaboration with the next genomics and what happens is that uh, these two conjugates are compatible with the future barcoding uh, technology that the next genomics launched uh, at the end of last year so the capture sequence for these two conjugates are specific for the future barcoding uh, oligos that are present in in, in the tenex genomics uh, system right now and the difference between total sick B and C is that total sick B is compatible with their gene expression kit, uh, the version three upgrade that they have with the future barcoding. And total sick C is compatible with their, with their immune profiling kit uh, or the five prime kit. 
which is more, which is widely used for sequencing T cell receptor and B cell receptors. Um, so using that conjugate will give you the information of of the antigens or the proteins um, compatible with the five prime kit. Now total seq A is also compatible with the version three of 10x genomics because it still can hybridize with the poly DT uh, section of the oligo that is still present on, on version three. But if people are, are using or are designing, if they are, if researchers are designing a panel that can be covered with total seq B conjugates, um, that's, that's a good way to build the panel because all B agents can be obtained from the next genomics. If people want to use total seq A because they have a larger panel and because we have a, a, a bigger portfolio for total seq A at the moment, we're planning to catch up with total seq B, uh, but at the moment we have more conjugates for total seq A. When people want to use total seq A antibodies with the version three, there are uh, other reagents that need to be ordered um, to be used with this kit. But those reagents are specified in the protocol that we have online. So if you have any questions about the protocol or how to use these different conjugates, you can contact our technical service group at BioLegion, and they will be happy to walk you through the process. Okay. I'll mention quickly, uh, I'm sorry, Shihao, uh, okay. you, you also mentioned the cell hashing antibodies, and we also have the cell hashing reagents for total seq A and total seq B. We are planning to release the ones for total seq B um, in the near future. Okay, thank you, thank you, Miguel. No problem. And, yeah, and so the next questions, and after uploading the, uploading the CYC antibody uh, data into Saddleband and then gauge in Saddleband to identify uh, a certain subpopulations, is there a way to explore the identifier for individual cells in a specific antibody uh, defined it? subpopulations and the short answer for this question is no there is no direct way to export the identifier and um, but you what you can do is you can uh, exporting the gating sml file from saddleband and then do a little bit data mining with the file to find the identifier but i think this is very uh, useful uh, function and we definitely should consider that and, and develop new features uh, in our future release. And, and this user, Richard, also have second question. The second question is, uh, how many combined mRNA and uh, antibody features can be imported into Cytoband? And, and basically, uh, in Cytoband, if you are a premium user and you only can import 100 fe features into Cytoband. And then, but if you are enterprise uh, license users, you can import 818 uh, features into Cytoband. Uh, but for the premium user, um, one thing uh, you, uh, you can do is to, uh, to bypass the column limit is to running a principal components analysis um, during the pre-processing step. And we will release a second version of our R script to help you to do that. And basically you can uh, add, import the principal components exported from the principal components analysis and use those principal components as the meta genes to do all the downstream analysis inside of them. Okay, uh, next question. Um, we have user ask, uh, do you normalize and scale the, the RMA and the antibody data using different methods? Um, the answer is uh, like for the normalization part, yes. We, I use the different normalization methods for RMA and antibody. And the reason why is like, for the M, uh, for the RMA C expression part, um, like all the analysis is very mature, and people uh, has been agreed that um, 
the library bias probably is one of the biggest bias you can see from your single cell RNA-C data. And you definitely want to do some normalization to remove that bias. And then if you're using um, cell hashing antibodies, actually you don't need to worry about gene lens bias and GC content bias. But if you do not use uh, the cell hashing antibodies, um, I see some paper and and they refer that you will see a gene lens bias and GC content bias in your single cell RNA-C data. So in that case, you definitely want to uh, do some normalizations to uh, to remove those gene lens and gene GC content bias from your RNA-C expression part of the single cell data, uh, the size C data. And for the, uh, for the data scaling part, we actually, uh, I applied the same method for uh, messenger RNA expression and the antibody expression. And the purpose of this data scaling is to make, uh, to allow you to compare RNA C expression with antibody expression, make sure that they have the same union and you, um, and which is a kind of a standard practice for running any kind of uh, clustering, unsupervised clustering algorithm. And what I did in the script, just calculate uh, the standard Z scores. And so all the columns will have uh, mean zero and, and all the columns will have standard deviation of one after the scaling. So the next question is, what is the maximum number of parameters FlowSong can use to cluster cells? And thanks for the questions. And basically uh, we do not have a hard limit for FlowSong in terms of how many number of parameters uh, can FlowSong analyze. But we do have a limit when you import the data into Cytoban. So, uh, so for sure, and basically you can, if you have enterprise lessons, you can use FlowSum to analyzing a data that has uh, about 800 uh, uh, parameters. So next questions. Um, the, the CD14 duplicated samples shows high background risk to CD14 uh, antibodies. How to separate the signal from the noise? And I'm not quite sure whether I understand this question correctly, but we should not see, uh, like after normalizations, we should be able to compare uh, different samples uh, because cells in different samples, they should have the same total number of rays after normalization. And, and the expression and uh, informations of like CD markers and CD14 genes is a relative expression compared to the total number of expressions within one cell or one sample. And by, by, by like running the normalization method we provided in our script, uh, we should be able to remove that bias. Also, Shi Hao, if I can just comment quickly. Uh, in general, you, you, people can also compare background if they use isotype controls, for example, and we have those as well in our portfolio. We have a number of isotype controls conjugated to the different formats, total seq A, B, and C. And that's another way where people can compare the background of, of any given antibody. Okay, thank you, Miguel. And the next question is, can size C workflow in Cytoban analyzing the raw data obtained from Illumina or 10X without the need of R software? Um, unfortunately, um, um, yeah, the answer is no, and you have to use R at least to 
pre-processing the data to do normalization and filtering. And those steps are very important. And, but in the future, we are considered to integrate the R script into Cytoband plan for, and so that people, uh, users can upload the raw gene expression count matrix uh, created uh, from Illumina or 10X and into Cytoband, and Cytoband will apply all the filtering and normalization method automatically to allow you to uh, conduct downstream analysis. So the next question, I think we only have time for maybe one more question and let me see which one. Um, we have a question about the, the Whitney map and uh, regarding the comparison of the gene expression and the protein expression by Whitney maps, um, like could we quantify the similarity or correlations by another method? Um, yes, the answer is yes. Um, um, you can do some simple like a uh, dot plot in, in Saddleband to to correlate gene expression um, with protein expressions. And in that way, you can calculating um, correlation coefficients and uh, all, like you can ask for the data and compute the correlation coefficient using the, maybe the Spearman correlation method um, or some other correlation methods. And uh, Okay, so, and this is the end of today's webinar. And thank you so much for attending today's webinar. And I hope everyone have a great day. And we will, uh, if you want, you are, if you are interested in obtaining today's slides or have more questions about, about today's talk, please feel free to email uh, support at settleband.org and we will answer the question as soon, uh, as soon as we can. Thank you, everyone. Great, thank you, Chi Hao. This is Liz. I just wanted to remind everybody that if they registered for this webinar or they had a colleague who registered for this webinar, we will be sending an email with a link to a recording for this webinar to those email addresses, hopefully by the end of the week. So thank you for your time. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone.